So hello everybody, it is Friday, so it's time for another Dax Fridays and new Dax function every Friday. In today's Dax Fridays, I am going to go back to basics and we're going to talk about what the difference is between a scalar, tabular and other type of functions. You know when sometimes you just try to use a function on a table and it doesn't work or you try to put a function on a calculator column or a measure and it doesn't work. I'm going to explain why so you have a better understanding of the Dax language. So. Let's get started. Okay, so it probably happened to you in the beginning. If you're a beginner, it's happening to you right now. You have a function, you try to use it, and suddenly you can't. So why? Why is that? I got actually a question on one of my Dax Friday's videos, and I understood that this requires a video. So here's the thing. Each function, Dax function, in Dax, it returns something, it either returns a scalar value, so a value, a like one um, number or a string, or it returns a table, or neither. <laughs> and it depends on what returns, you have to use it in one way or another. So I have this DAX glossary that I've published on the data gallery, so I don't know why it's not loading right now, but it will load. I will post the link down below so you can check it out. And you can actually download it. I'm going to upload the new version. Hopefully I remember to do that. But you can download it and use it yourself. So here's the thing. In here, you can see I have all the DAX functions. I have the Microsoft link, the Corval link to a DAX trader video, if there is one. And then here I have added a new column that it says result type. So for example, ABS will return a scalar value, this is what they call it, I call it a value here to simplify. All selected, it will return a table. You have, th there are some unknowns that I haven't been able to classify yet, I will go through the list later on. So you see that most of the DAX functions return actually a value. How do I know this? If you go to one of the, uh, you know, the DAX uh, library, uh, the documentation from Microsoft, you see here return value, it will tell you. So we have here dates, month to date, it returns a table. Okay, so now we're going to do a practical example. I think it's the easiest way to learn. We have here the North Wind data set and I am going to do some crazy things, but just to demonstrate how these things work, okay? So if I start with a table, if we create a new table, this is a table, not a measure, not a column, a table. And I try to do some, you know, intelligence is already smart. It knows that I'm in a table, so it will, by default, default to functions that are table functions. But let's ignore the what is telling me, and I'm going to put some of discounts, for example. So I click enter. And it says the expression specified in the query is not a valid table expression. So what does that mean? Okay, if we go to our DAX glossary and I go to S and we found sum, sum returns a value. And I am in here, table returns a table. So this is what it's telling you, is sum returns a value and this new table needs a function that returns a table. So for that reason, you can't use it. I can't display anything because I don't know what to display. So let's give it something that you can actually display. So we go filter and then we do products and then we do um, where category ID is equal one. So this is going to display a table where all the products have category one. You can see here category one, there's no other. And it returns the entire table because I haven't specified that I want any other column or a specific column. So if we go here again and we look for filter, here we have filter and then it says it returns a table and this is why it works. This is why you can put a table function on new table because it returns a table. Lovely, isn't it? Okay, now you are going to tell me, Ruth, I have used filter on a measure before and it works. Yes, it does. Let me show you why. So this is what we're going to do. 
they probably have used filter in this way. Let's say that we want to have the sum of sales where product category is what. So I'm still on table. Push that out. Calculate. You see that it's already telling me calculate doesn't show us a default because I'm still on table and calculate yes returns a scalar value. But let's fake it. Let's say okay, I want to use calculate. And then I am going to use sales and calculate again. It returns. Let me show you. So you see, just check it out if you are not secure, if you don't know. So calculate returns a value and I am still on a table function. OK, so here we have calculate. If I press enter in here, it says the expression is specified again is not a valid table expression because calculate will return a value. But if I copy these, and let me remove these so we get a table there, and I do a measure, so the same thing as a measure, Yes, obviously I'm not going to see anything here. So sorry. Okay, let me remove that one. So I have here my measure and it's giving me a number which is, let me see what it is, one point, no, 286,000. Now, let's put product name in there. Let's go to, no, sorry, it's category. So let's put category name, let's, put category ID so you can see that it's actually category ID one and then let's put sales so as you can see this sales can you see anything <laughs> this sales for beverages is actually 286 so it's actually giving me what we suspected the sales for category ID one and it works because measure a measure returns always a value. Always. <laughs> okay. So you have to be mindful as to what function you are using in order to put it in the right place. So you can't use tables within a measure if you wrap them into something, for example, calculate that will transform the table into a scholar value. Okay, does that make sense? And for using tables, when you're using the new table function, this one, you need to have functions that return tables. Now, I'm sure it has happened to you that you had a, let's do an example, why not? So we're going to create a new measure and watch this. So we're going to do calculate and we're going to do the sum of unit products unit price and then we are going to do filter and then we're going to do product table we're going to filter product table where product id is less or equal to so we're going to do a cumulative of i don't know why you want to do that but we're going to do a cumulative of product unit price so we're going to use earlier and then we're going to use and as you can see it, it just it stops working and you say why is that it is earlier that is giving us trouble so you cannot use earlier in a measure because earlier is all about raw context okay so if i copy these i go in here and I put a new column. Paste it there. And as you can see now, it works. Why? Because custom columns have row context and that's where you can use earlier. So you cannot use earlier, but you can but in different ways on a measure. Okay, so depending on what function you're, you're using, you need to know if it is a value, if it is a table, and then you know if you can use it on a measure, a calculated column, or table, and then there are some functions that 
you won't be able to use as a measure it has to be a calculated column because of row context so you need to know this and the value and the table it is available in the tax documentation row context it, it is there but you have to know what you're reading and it's not that easy so it is trial and error if you cannot put in a measure put in a calculated column and that will give you ideas <laughs> now there are another type of functions and they are called i don't nothing other <laughs> <laughs> actually not call anything but there are functions that do either not return a value and do not return a table either for example i think user relationship was actually missing here for one re whatever reason and i think cross filtering was also missing here i have to check that why that is but let's do it here so user relationship this are some examples user relationship we have it there Take this out. Um, user relationship returns no value. The function, what it does, user relationship is activates relationships. Okay, so activates inactive relationships. Cross filtering, what it does is activates bidirectional or deactivates them. So there are some functions that have nothing to do with values and tables, it's just help you do other stuff. And if you are unsure, check the return value always on the um, tax documentation and you'll know. But main thing, if it is a table that you want to create, you need to create a table function. If you're using measure or calculate column, it has to return a value. There are other functions that do other stuff and there are some functions that you can only use in calculated columns. So if you enjoy this one-on-one -on -one video, you probably will enjoy one of my other one-on-one -on -one videos, you know, the basics of DAX. So I'm going to put the playlist down below and also to my side. So if you have more time this weekend, you can just go and check them out. If not, I will see you again on Monday with another Power BI video. Until then, take care and bye-bye.